Welcome back to another episode of No BS Woodworking, where today we're talking about the bandsaw. Now these videos give you actionable information with no fluff, no sponsorships, and of course, no BS. They're supported entirely by my website and my website alone, so if you find value in these videos, head on over there and check out what we have to offer. Today I'm gonna show you how to tune up your bandsaw so that it cuts perfectly. I'm even gonna show you how to do it with your phone. We're gonna talk about the three ways to use a bandsaw, which is resawing, rough dimensioning, and cutting curves or templates, circles, all those kind of things. By the end of this, you'll be able to go into the shop and use your bandsaw like a pro. And there's some common misconceptions about setup. So let's start there, because that's the most important part. One of the most intimidating things about a bandsaw is before you even get your blade on, it comes like this in a circle. In fact, it comes even tighter than that. And when you go to release that, it can spring everywhere. So I'm gonna show you how I release this. You wanna just, wearing a pair of gloves, you're gonna take it and just slowly open it up. Don't throw it up in the air because it's gonna whip open and I one time did that when I was first getting started and hit myself in the face. But to put it back in that circle, because you're gonna change blades, right? You take your one of your hands and grab it the other way. So you have one normal, one the other way, and then you just rotate them opposite each other. And it's just gonna wrap up like that. And then you can just hang that on the wall. It's not gonna spring open on you. So from there, once you get it open, you're gonna put it on your band. So you need to adjust the tracking. This is your tracking knob. This is gonna adjust your top wheel frontwards and backwards and adjust where your blade tracks on it. You can rotate this and move your blade, but you have to be spinning the wheel while you're doing it. So the right behind the gullets of your teeth should be tracking in the dead center on the crown of your wheel. The highest point should be right behind the gullet and that is gonna ensure your blade stays really straight. If after you watch this whole video and you follow my directions and your blade is still not cutting straight, it's because your blade is not sharp. So if you wanna adjust tracking, you're gonna spin it like this, move the knob, and then once you get it, you can lock that knob down in place so it doesn't move. Now let's talk about tension. There are three ways to tension a bandsaw. And I'm telling you, nothing matters more than tension for good cuts. I used to just crank on it till it was super tight and it sounded super ting, ting, ting. Uh, I don't know if that comes across in video, but a very high pitched noise and think that that's the way they're supposed to go, but it's actually much lower than you think, proper tension. So you to do it. The first two are kind of guesstimates of the right answer and then I do have an exact answer. First one is distance. If you push on your bandsaw blade, it should move about half an inch from uh, its still position. Again, a guesstimate. The other one is sound. You pluck it and you're listening for kind of a deep bass sound, which I'll show you here. The third is an app. Uh, I'm working on an app with Andy Klein. He released it about two years ago. It's currently in beta version over on the store. If you buy it now, we're gonna have an update coming up in two months. We're gonna increase the price. But if you get it now, we will give all updates for free to everyone who owns it. We test all these bandsaw blades on this rig behind us. We're gonna add a bunch more brands and I'm gonna show you how it works here in a second. So let's go through the three methods and you can see exactly how we tension it. Okay, the first way to tension is with distance. You should be able to push your bandsaw blade when your finger turns white about half an inch. That should be about good tension. It's not an exact science. Like I said, it's a guesstimate, but when I used to crank up my blade really, really tight, there's no way I could push it more than an eighth. So it should give you a good indication that you are too tight if you really can't push it that far. The next one is sound. I'm gonna take my microphone off. If you get our app, we actually have the sound you can play. It sounds better in your headphones, but uh, it should sound like this. It's a very deep baritone sort of bassy sound. And I'm gonna show you how we do that with the app too. So here's our bandsaw tensioning app here. You can play the tone. Like I said, this sounds way better with headphones on. But what you do is you set your parameters. We have a few different brands in here now, Timberwolf, Sawblade.com, and then other, if those aren't your brands, you select other. You set your wheel to wheel distance. Now that's the center of the wheel to the center of the wheel, not top to bottom or anything like that. I have a 17 inch bandsaw, 39 inches between the wheels. Is your blade carbide tip? What are you cutting? What type of, do you wanna do a straight or a curved cut? And then what is the width of your blade? And you're gonna go back and you're gonna start your test. Now, when you measure this, you're gonna to need to make sure all your guards are backed off. If you're not, if you're getting a good reading on this side, you can actually go to the inside portion of your saw where there's nothing touching it, but it's really important that nothing is touching. So we're gonna go ahead and put our microphone right by the bandsaw blade, and we're gonna give it a light pluck, just, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start. A little bit too loose, so we're just gonna do it one more time, tighten this up. There we go. 
we're just good like that. I'm just gonna tighten it just a smidge. I don't need to rerun the test. Let me show you the testing apparatus that Andy came up with. So very briefly, and we'll get back to how to set up the guides. This is the rig that Andy came up with that we are now doing a bunch of other brands. In fact, if you wanna put your favorite brand down in the comments, I'll make sure it's included in the app. Take a length of bandsaw blade, attach it here. There's a digital scale here. And then we tighten that so we know exactly the tension. We measure the frequency so that we can then correlate that to a proper tension. We know how to do it now for every size of bandsaw up to an inch and a bunch of different brands. So like I said, if you buy the app now, it's five bucks. We're gonna raise the price in the future for the next update, but if you buy it now, you'll get the update for free. Let's go back to putting the guides on the bandsaw. So now our bandsaw is tensioned and we need to set up our guides here. And first we need to set the distance at their back. So I pull them in and you want these just to be right behind the gullets, just about, I don't know, a 16th or a 32nd of an inch behind the gullets and we're gonna go ahead and tighten that up. Now that we have our distance forward set correctly, we're gonna do our rear bearing. And the way I like to do this, sometimes people use like a playing card or a business card or a dollar bill folded twice. But what I like to do is I just take it until it touches the bandsaw blade and then I just push it back just a little bit like that. And the way you can tell if this is set correctly is when you rotate your wheels, the guide should not move, but then you can push on the teeth with your finger without it hurting and move the guide. So if it's not hurting when you push on the blade and it'll still move the guide, then you're in the right place. Now I'm going ahead and setting our bottom guide the same. We're gonna do our side guides here. Same thing, I like to just press it up against the blade and then I tap it over until there's a small gap. Same thing here, tap it over just like that. And it should be just a, about a business card's width gap between each of them, just like that. Same thing with the side guides down here. We're gonna go till we touch. Just like that. Then we're gonna tighten those down. Before we talk about the different types of cuts, let's talk about the different types of blades. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginners make is they have a small, you know, 14 inch bandsaw or even smaller, and they buy a three quarter inch blade that has like two teeth per inch called a resaw king or something like that, thinking that's gonna help them resaw. The biggest thing is setup. Set it up right and you're gonna be able to resaw, but a three quarter inch blade on a small bandsaw, it's not gonna be able to turn that. This is a half inch blade. That's the biggest blade I'm usually gonna run. This is three TPI, which stands for three teeth per inch. And this is a quarter inch blade with six teeth per inch. This is what I'm gonna use for cutting curves. And those are the, basically the two blades that I'm gonna use. I'll link the ones I use down below. But the reason for the teeth per inch and the reason why it matters when you're resawing is because these gullets, very much like a rips blade on your table saw, need to carry away the sawdust before they can continue to cut. So when these gullets fill up, it can't do any more cutting because there's too much sawdust in there for the teeth to engage with the wood. And the reason that is, is if you look at this little setup here, pretend these are teeth on a blade, uh, you need to come down like this and it's gonna remove the sawdust. So when you're resawing, you have to get through a lot more wood. It helps if you have less teeth, like three TPI. And so when you're cutting curves, usually that's gonna be in a much shorter piece and you need more room to be able to turn. Uh, you're gonna use a smaller blade with less teeth per inch. If you're cutting really, 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 really tight circles, maybe you go with an eighth inch with 14 TPI, but half inch, three TPI and quarter inch, six TPI is gonna get you almost everything you could ever wanna do, and it's not gonna tax your bandsaw. So since we have this set up in here, let's talk about resawing, and I'll show you a couple ways to do that. Okay, now there's two ways to resaw. One would be against a resaw fence, one would be freehand. I don't recommend freehand unless you have a board that is at least like an inch and a half, two inches wide, and is not super tall. I'm gonna show you both real quick, but essentially you wanna hit the center of the board or you know, depending on what width you need, you may be resawing this into several pieces. You're gonna wanna put your guard just above the wood. That's gonna help you get the straightest cut. Uh, one thing you do need to be careful is make sure your resaw fence can fit under there. Um, the other thing you could do if you have an underpowered bandsaw is, I've done it before, you take your table saw and you make a cut kind of about an inch and a half up on both sides, taking small passes, and that's gonna help clean up some material. One of the things that's really important when you're resawing is you can only go as fast as the bandsaw will allow. If you're pushing so hard that you can, you know, that you're struggling, you're pushing way too hard because remember, it needs to clear that sawdust out of the cut before it can cut further down the board. So you're gonna set this up with a fence like so. You're gonna draw a line down the area of the board that you want to resaw. And then most important, you're gonna to wanna to use a feather board. And you wanna make sure the feather board is behind the blade so it's not pushing the off cut into the teeth. 
You're gonna set that up just like so. And then I like to use two push sticks and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna put one push stick here on the side and that's gonna keep it up against the fence and also push it through the blade. And then I'm gonna have something else for when I get to the end of the cut. Cause you'll see at the end of the cut, you're pushing, pushing, pushing. And then all of a sudden as it cuts through, it releases very quickly. So when you get to the end of the board, you need to be very careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that for you and see how when I get to the end, I'm gonna reach around the board and pull it through. I've left the guard off because I think it is very interesting to watch how the bearings interact with the blade when you're actually under load and you're cutting something. The next way to do this is freehand, and you wanna draw a line down the center of your board, and that's actually real easy to do. You sort of guesstimate, and then you're just gonna go both ways, flip your board over from the other way, and right in between there is gonna be the center of your board. You can even tighten that up if you want. And then you're gonna to want to make sure you do the front just so you know where to start, and then go down your whole board like so, flip it around, and there we go, now we know that's gonna be the middle. And I'm just gonna freehand this, go very slow, and just make sure we're kinda of keeping it in line there. So if you see the inside of this, we have a perfect, man, that is really pretty wood. Perfectly book matched and it's gonna look gorgeous once we run it through the planer. But you can see the quality of cut is fantastic and that's because of that good setup. A bandsaw is always gonna leave marks you need to plane out, but you can get pretty good and pretty close. So let's talk about cutting curves. Now this is a template. With a bandsaw, the goal is to get it as close as possible to this line so that then we can flush trim it. And the closer you get, the less work on your router bit there's gonna be and it's a lot, lot better and safer the closer you can get. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in our quarter inch blade here in a second, but I wanted to show you a little trick. If you don't wanna switch blades, you know, I can be kind of lazy just like everybody else and I don't wanna go through the whole rigmarole of changing blades. So here's a little technique I like to use. I'm gonna leave the dust collector off so I can talk while I'm doing it, but it's really hard to back up a bandsaw blade. So if you run to a point with this blade where you can't turn anymore and you're gonna hit where your template is, it's really hard to back out because you can pull your blade off the wheels, especially if it's spinning, it can be real dangerous. So here's a little trick I like to do to get in tight curves like this with a bigger blade. I'll just take it and cut a bunch of lines, getting real close to my template. Now, if you're smart and you don't want to remake a template, I would take your template off and trace it with a pencil. But I'm using this here to show you how close I can get, even with a big blade. Then, once you do that, you can just come the other way. And there we go. It's not pretty, but if you don't wanna change blades, it'll certainly work. Now, let me change blades. I'm gonna show you a couple cool techniques for getting real close to your template. All right, when you're cutting curves, again, my guard is off so you can see what's going on here. It's important to check a few things. One, you wanna make sure you're not gonna run into your main post here. Two, you wanna do some relief cuts. Like this is, you'll never make that turn. Even with the tiniest blade in the world, you'd never make that turn. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of plan ahead to do all of those things. You can take small bites. One of the things that's kind of scary is backing out. You can pull your blade off of the wheels and then you got a whole mess. So if you do have to back up or you get into an area where you can't turn anymore, just turn off your bandsaw weight and then pull it out. The other thing that's really important is only doing what it'll let you, just like resawing, you can't push harder than the blade will cut. So if you start to turn and it's not going, slow down and, and make your turn slower. So. We're gonna go ahead and cut this out so you can see what I do. I'm gonna cut out this side uh, so you see the relief cuts. I'm gonna make relief cuts here and then for all these things, we're gonna go ahead and cut those out and then I'm gonna show you a really cool technique for doing this side. Now here's a fun little thing for tracing templates. You can't do curves as tight as this, but this is perfect for it. Anything straight or curved. I have a video on this, which I'll link down below. We also sell these templates and knobs and bolts and everything like that. Uh, but it's a follower, so you can take it and put it right around your bandsaw blade, just like this, and you can set the distance. I'm gonna set mine at about a 16th away from my template. And we're gonna tighten this down. Now when I start cutting, this is gonna follow my template, but it's gonna keep this distance away so then we can come back and flush trim it later.
wow, that just, I'm always amazed by how well that works. All right, let me show you one more really cool technique for doing something if you need a zero clearance insert or you're doing like real small parts or you wanna cut a circle. Okay, another really good technique if you need a zero clearance or you're cutting really small things or you just need to attach something to a board like for cutting a circle, you could screw a board right here or over here and just spin it through and it'll be exact, if you measure, you know, three inches, you're gonna get a six inch circle and so on. Uh, we sell these large fixture locking kits that are really cool. They fit in T-Track and lock down. And this is a great little technique if you're cutting little pieces and you don't want them to fall on your bandsaw or you're having a tough time with tear out on the bottom. So you can just add a piece of plywood, attach it with uh, some miter lock things like we have or a clamp or something like that. It's a great little tip. A bandsaw is an amazing tool. It actually is one of those tools that can save you money if you're resawing boards. Because a lot of times when I got started, I would just plane away material to have the right thickness when I could have used a bandsaw to resaw. One last little tip is always detension your bandsaw. You should never leave it in tension because as the temperature changes from night to day, your blade expands and contracts, and over time it's going to cause it to dull. If you've done all this and you're doing it right and you're still getting bad cuts, your blade is probably pretty dull. There's some ways to sharpen it. Andy Klein, who we're working on this bandsaw app with, he has a really cool sharpening jig video, which I'll link down below. You can make yourself, but bandsaw blades are like 20 to 40 bucks. Uh, the ones I use, I think are 40. Just buy new ones. They last a long time and great little tool. So hopefully this helps. Let me know down in the comments what no BS video you'd like to see next. I'll link the app and everything down below in the pinned comment. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, stay safe in the shop. Head over to the website, check out the charity, do all the things down below. Thank you.